and talk to me during lab and, and we'll talk uh, a little bit about it in more detail. So I'm not going to talk about the basic functionality of Canvas. I'm going to talk about how I'm going to use it in this class. So um, I'll do an overview of that, then we'll review the syllabus, and um, then we will talk about lab one and then we will get into the material. Okay, uh, for this class, um, I, I would encourage, well, well, we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, most of the action takes place on the modules uh, tab, all right? There will be, for each week, a module that will have in it uh, a couple of different things, all right? One of those things is a to-do this week, which talks about sort of, you know, what, what the main things that we're going to be covering um, and, and so on. For example, for this week, here's the goals for this week, all right? Here's the activities I want you to do and there's the assignment that is due. All right. There also will be here any sort of handout. So instead of like handing out in paper uh, a handout, I will, I will post to, to Canvas. The handout for this week is what's called the Fair Use Guideline. What this talks about is um, whether you can take materials off the web and use it in your projects. Uh, and it's different given the fact that we're in an educational context. All right, because we're in a classroom, uh, you, are, you have more flexibility to use stuff off of the web, provided you give attribution to it. So, for example, if you were doing a web page about the Cleveland Browns, you could go to the Cleveland Browns website and take a picture from it and put it on your web page. That's something that, strictly speaking, legally you would not be able to do if you were doing a site not in an educational context. All right, if you had a sporting goods store, for example, you couldn't take a picture off the Cleveland Browns website and, and use it. Um, strictly speaking, that would be a copyright violation unless you got permission from, from the owner of the copyright. So I, I want to, in this class, respect copyright. And this is sort of an overview of what you can and can't do. So I encourage you to read this. The too long, didn't read version of this is that it's okay to take some materials from a site and use it in your project, but give credit. So, for example, a little note at the bottom that says, I took this page from Cleveland Browns. I, I took this image from clevelandbrowns.com is, is, is generally speaking enough for, for this class. It's not like I am, uh, you know, going to be looking at this with a lawyer to look for any slight violation, but I, I want to show, I, I want to encourage respect for copyright law um, in this class. So read through this. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, also in each module will be the assignment for the week, and we'll come back to this assignment. Um, well, let's, let's might as well do it now. Um, Using the web, research the following topics, HTML, HTML5, CSS. Okay, so go and read about these different topics. Go out uh, and find websites about them and so on. Then you'll create a web page that has an article about each of these topics, summarizing what you have learned. Each article should contain at least one written paragraph. Use the tags covered in chapter one. So um, depending on how far we get today, we may not be able to do this after today's class. If, if all you know about, if this is your first uh, uh, time ever doing any web development, we, m we might not have covered sufficient material for you to complete this assignment. But at the very least in lab, you can go and you can start doing research on these. And you can start taking notes, and you can find the websites that you want to use. And we'll talk more about that. Um, we'll talk about the tags um, and, and how to create a web page. Uh, we'll start that at the end of class, uh, towards the end of class today, and we'll finish it up on uh, Wednesday. So by end of the day Wednesday, you should be able to do this assignment. All right. So every week is going to have a module like this. All right. A week one, week two, and so on module. This is also where the videos for the class will appear. All right. So uh, later on today, um, there'll be 
Um, in addition to uh, the video, there'll be any example files that I create in class. All right. One feedback, uh, one bit of feedback I've gotten from some of my classes is sometimes it's hard to read the screen in the videos. That's why I also post the files that I use. Uh, I recognize that. Um, uh, I, I, I hope uh, that the folks responsible for that have a, a better solution at some point in the future. But for now, I will, in addition to posting the video, I will post any examples that I create, the files, the, the code files, uh, so that you can take a closer look at them. Um, sometimes, you know, it, it might be better to have the video open along with the uh, code file. So if you can't see exactly what I'm typing in, you'll be able to look at the code file and, and, and see it that way. But this is where the um, videos will appear. All right. Uh, discussions. You're welcome to post to the discussion forum. And I think you're even allowed to create your own uh, discussions in here if you want. Consider the discussion forums to be um, like raising your hand and asking uh, a question in class. All right. Um, if you have a question that you think other people would benefit from hearing the answer, post it in the discussion forum. If your question is more related to something specific to you or your project or something real specific like that where you don't think it's really, uh, it would really benefit other people to see uh, about it, then you're better off sending me an email. All right. Um, assignments, we'll show all the assignments. The assignments are also included in the modules as well, so that's probably the better place to view them. You can review your grades here, people, and so on. Announcements, um, again, I'll post announcements as appropriate. Uh, let's take a look at the syllabus, and, and I, I don't um, want to read the syllabus word by word because that is a painful experience for everyone. All right, so what I will do is I, I will trust that, that you'll, you'll read it on your own, and I'll just hit the highlights, and I'll emphasize the stuff that I think um, is, is most important. So the beginning is uh, basic contact information for me. Um, one of the reasons I, I put all this on here is I want to encourage you to ask questions if you have questions. And therefore, I give multiple ways for you to ask questions. All right, you can certainly raise your hand and ask questions during class. You can ask questions during lab. You can see me during office hours, which I haven't determined those yet, but I will soon, and I'll, I'll post them when I, when I have those. Uh, you can email me. You can email me through Canvas. You can make arrangements to Skype with me. Um, you, if none of those work, you can contact me, and we'll figure something out. All right. The reason I do this is I want to remove any obstacles that you would have for being able to contact me and asking me questions. All right, because um, it's so important if you're not understanding something to get it cleared up and get it cleared up as quick as possible. All right. Um, sometimes students are reluctant to ask questions because they think, well, if I just work on it a little bit harder, um, I'll be able to figure it out on my own. And in a way, that's admirable. I, I can admire the, you wanting to figure it out on your own and all that. But there's a difference between working on something where you're making progress on it and working on something where you're just spinning your wheels and, and you're not making any progress at all. So therefore, I would encourage you um, to ask questions. Uh, on occasion, I won't answer your question directly. I might point you in the direction where you can figure out the answer for yourself. All right. Uh, but by all means, ask the question. Um, I, I, I've never, you know, I, I've never uh, gotten angry or or criticized someone for asking just about any question. I can't really think of a case uh, where that has happened. So by all means, ask. And there's a bunch of different ways that you can ask. I want to remove any excuse that you have for not being able to contact me. All right. Course description outcomes, that's really to give us focus on what, what it is that we're looking at. So take some time to read this. The text of materials, um, storage media. Um, if you have had any computer classes here, you know that um, when the machines are reset, it starts with a clean uh, disk. So any files that you save won't be there 
the ne after the next time that someone reboots the machine. So therefore, it's important for you to take a copy of, of your work. Canvas will be used to communicate with students. I urge you to check Canvas uh, a couple times, um, even if you don't have any particular questions, or even if you've turned in your lab or, or whatever, because I will post announcements there. Um, on occasion, someone will ask me a question that I don't have an immediate answer for. Well, I'll go and research it, and I'll post an answer to it. Or occasionally, I'll have a problem with something. My code won't work. And when that happens, it's embarrassing. I get a little flustered. Uh, and usually, after I have five minutes to settle down and sit and look at it, I can figure out what I did wrong. All right, So I'll post announcements periodically. Um, as we get into, uh, you know, if anything were to happen um, that I was sick a particular day or I wasn't going to be there for class or something like that, I'll post an, an announcement as soon as I know uh, for sure that I'm not going to be here. So check periodically uh, the announcements uh, on Canvas. Instructor approach. Uh, I am going to read one line from this. This is your class. All right. Um, it's a relatively small class. There's, I don't know, 15-ish people uh, in here. Um, so it's not a huge class. So um, the class needs to be meaningful for you, and it needs to work for you. So if there's something you have questions about or something that you're not getting or whatever, please don't hesitate to ask. Um, it doesn't do me any good to think that I've covered something, so I can check it off my list and say, yes, I covered that, if no one gets it, or even if uh, a, a few people don't get it. Right? Um, the class is only successful if it really connects with you. It doesn't matter what I talk about. If it doesn't connect with you, um, then, then it needs to be fixed. So by all means, if you have questions, ask them because it's your class. The very worst that I will do if you ask a question in class, for example, is I'll say, let's talk about it in lab. You know, let's, you know, I don't, I don't think, uh, uh, I think it would be better if we addressed it one-on-one -on -one in lab as opposed to, to, to answering it right now. All right. Read the rest of this. College policies, whole list of college policies, instructor policies. I have a long dissertation about late assignments. Uh, I think I am probably more flexible than most instructors about late assignments. But um, there's limits to my flexibility. <laughs> All right. Uh, what's especially bothersome is, and it happens every once in a while, that you that you'll get a student that literally disappears. I don't hear anything from them, uh, and so on. And then around week nine, they turn in assignment one or something like that. That literally happens almost every semester in at least one of the classes. All right. In a case like that, I feel it appropriate for me to deduct points for that. All right. It's like, come on, you know. If there's some circumstances, like you know, you, you know, there's a family emergency or you're ill and you're going to be late for an assignment or two. You don't even have to let me know details if you, if you, don't, if you don't want to. I don't, I don't want you to, to, to say anything that you're not comfortable to say to me. But just say, you know, look, there's something going on. I'm going to be late with the next assignment. Great. All right? In the, in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't matter to me. Uh, what matters to me is what you know when you leave this class. Um, if you're a week behind or a couple days behind on an assignment and you get it and you understand it, I'm generally speaking fine with that. So if, I see, if, you, if you're asking me questions and you're showing up the lab and you're showing up the class and you turn in an occasional assignment a little bit late, I have no problem at all with that. It's, it's when I don't hear from students and I don't see any signs that they're working on it and then all of a sudden I just get assignments in. That's what really, um, that's what really is when I feel justified to deduct points. So read through this. I think I did. I think I did a good job explaining my policy. Maybe, maybe not. Ask, ask me if you have questions um, about it. Um, that being said, if you find that you're late on every single assignment, then something probably needs to change. 
Either you need to ask me questions or we need to talk about it individually and we need to work through it. Maybe you need to spend more time working on the class. Uh, maybe you need some additional assistance. So you see me during office hours or whatever. All right. So um, late on one assignment because you were ill, I don't have a problem with. You start getting late on every single assignment. I don't know if I have a problem with that, but that's a warning sign for you. That, that something needs to change, and you need to talk to me about it. Incompletes. I avoid giving incompletes uh, unless there truly is some sort of emergency that prohibits you from getting the uh, completing the course. And we can talk about that when the time comes. All right. I hope this adds up to 100 points. There is 55 points worth of homework. That would be like 11 assignments, each worth five points. You have a portfolio, and you have a project. And that indeed does add up to 100 points, so good. Um, I wanna, I'm going to point out to you the portfolio and project sections on Canvas, and I urge you to read them uh, because I will be covering them. Uh, I will be talking about them more in subsequent classes. I'm not going to talk about them today. But I will um, uh, in, a, in a minute here. I'll, I'll point out um, where they are, and, and later on in the class, I'll, I'll go over them in more detail. Um, that's 100 points, and you should just be able to sum up your points. 90 uh, to 100 points is an A, 80 to 89 is a B, and so on. Here's a schedule, and this is approximate. Um, you know, sometimes we go a little faster than normal, sometimes we go a little slower than normal. But this gives you sort of a good benchmark. Your assignments are due the Wednesday of the indicated week. So in other words, I make an assignment this week, that assignment is due next week. All right, so Monday is Labor Day, so we don't have class on Monday. All right, next Monday. Um, so lab one is due Wednesday of next week. All right, lab two, I'll assign during week two, it will be due Wednesday of week three. So when I make an assignment, it's due the following Wednesday. So that gives you a pretty good amount of time. All right, so this first assignment isn't really that difficult, so you may finish it fairly quickly. All right, um, in which case you can start looking at the project, looking at the portfolio, and uh, um, you know, uh, start thinking about those things. All right, any questions about the syllabus? Let me point out to you the project and portfolio modules. Portfolio, there's an overview of it. And then there's two drop boxes for the two portions of it. There's sort of the first version of it and the final version of it. The project is done in two parts. There's a design, and then there's the completed version of it. So read through these two sections uh, as soon as you can, uh, because I'll be talking about them um, sometime over the next couple of weeks. Any questions about any of this? All right. Web pages. If you look at any web page, there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of different stuff on web pages. There's a lot of different content on web pages. What is some of the content that it can appear on a web page? Some of the content that can appear on a web page. Yes. Pardon me? Charts. All right. I will. I'll talk in more general terms and talk just about images. Because the image could be a chart, or the image could be a photograph of something. All right. So charts, images are one kind of content that can appear on a web page. 
What's another kind of content that can appear on a web page? Yes. Oh, text? Text, all right. Buttons. Buttons was the name of my dog growing up. So I almost had to stop and wipe a tear from my eye when I heard Buttons, because like, oh, poor Buttons. She's, she's in doggy heaven now, all right. Boy, I brought the class down real quick, didn't it? We'll, we'll try to get back upbeat again. Uh, anything else? Other content on web pages? Yes. Links. All right. Audio? Sure. Yeah. Okay, advertisements. That's that's true. Go ahead. Videos. Uh, animations. The point is, is that there's a whole bunch of stuff that can appear on a web page. So how do you put it on a web page? How do you put stuff on a web page? All right? Web pages are viewed through what is called a web browser. All right? What's a web browser? Internet Explorer, Chrome, Firefox. These are all web browsers. All right? Web browsers are the programs that you use to view the web. And so if I go to a web page go to ESPN here we see some of the things that we talked about there's some images there is an image there are links there's certainly text. Probably somewhere there would be video. Right here it looks like a video. And so on. Now, web pages are, are created in a language called HTML. HTML stands for hypertext markup language. Hypertext means it's more than regular text. All right, what's regular text? It's, it's words, right? I mean, just plain words. Well, clearly we have more than words on web pages. We have images, we have links, we have all those great things. So we got more than that. So it's not text, it's hypertext. It's new and improved text, all right? It's better than regular text. It's more than regular text. The markup language part is not quite as easy to explain, all right? Um, HTML files are plain text files. In other words, you, they're just text. They're just words typed into a file. Well, how does the HTML language convey to the browser what each piece of content is. All right. In other words, um, how does the browser know that this is supposed to be a picture and not just some words? How does the browser know that this is a link and not just words? Yes? The Through the coding, right? And a particular kind of coding is called a markup language. What do I mean by markup? Well, Oh, I don't think I want to use that one. That looks controversial. All right, this, this one looks a little less controversial. Let's say this is a handout that your teacher gave you. And there you go. 
let's say when the teacher gave you this handout, let's say this is a review sheet for an exam. I think it actually is an exam. And I was going to say, and I hope no one has this teacher because I'm just showing you what your first exam is going to look like. But this exam is from 2012, and I would hope that the teacher has changed it since then. All right. But let's say this, instead of being the exam, let's say this is a review part. And let's say that the teacher says that this first paragraph is really important. All right. There's going to be a lot of questions about that. What might you do? You might put a star next to it. Circle it. If you have a highlighter, you might highlight it. You're literally marking up the content to say and give some extra meaning to it. In other words, this is words and this is words, but these words are different than those words. These words are important words. All right? These words are words that you want to pay attention to. You want to pay special attention to. So you mark it up. You actually physically put markings on your paper that indicate some extra meaning. These aren't just ordinary words. These are important words. If, on the other hand, the teacher says, you know what, this one, yeah, it might be on the test, but there might just be one question. It's really not that important. Maybe you put an X through it. Oh, I ain't got time to worry about that one. All right? And the X means, yeah, that you can ignore that. So you're actually marking up. You're putting marks on your paper to indicate some meaning. Web pages are like that. We use what's called a markup language to describe what a particular piece of content means. All right? Now, I'm going to start off and I'm going to create a fragment of a web page. Now, this is important to understand. I'm not completing a complete web page yet. I'm not making a complete web page yet. I'm making a fragment of a web page. Either end day today or um, on Wednesday, I'll go and finish out this web page. But in HTML, hypertext markup language, we make the text more than ordinary text by marking up the text and putting code in there that says what each, what each particular piece of content means. All right. Let me say, let's say we're going to do a web page about um, web development classes at Lorain Community College. All right. So we're going to do a, a web page about that. So I'm going to sketch out that web page. If I was going to do this web page, I might have a big headline at the top of the page, a big heading that says Web Development Classes at Loring County Community College. And I'm just going to mention like three of them. All right, there's a few others, but three of them are, are the ones that I'm going to mention. I might have CISS 116 or 216. Web development. Then I might have a paragraph about it. Then I might have the next class, CISS 232. Also, a headline. And then I might have a paragraph about that. Then I might have CISS 243 and a paragraph about that. All right. So I'm going to create at least a web page fragment that contains this stuff in it. And then either, again, I'll finish it up later today or I'll finish it up on Wednesday. Now, you can create web pages a bunch of different ways. I use a simple text editor in this class, all right? Um, simply because I want to make sure that you really learn the code, all right? There are tools that allow you to sort of draw a web page. If you do that, that's sort of like using a box cake recipe, right? Uh, a box cake instead of making a cake from scratch, right? 
yeah, it might get the job done, but it's not going to be as good as if, if you make it from scratch. So we're going to make our uh, web pages from scratch. We're going to use a, a simple text editor. And there's any number of simple text editors. The one I'm going to use is, is Notepad++. If you have a Mac, there are any number of, of, of uh, text editors that you can use there as well. So I'm going to open up Notepad++. You can also just use regular old Notepad if you want to. All right. And I'm going to start by putting in the content that I want on the page. Web development classes at LCCC, CISS 216, web development. CISS 232, client server scripting, CISS Okay, so there's all my content. All right, and you can't see it. I do that at least once a class. And I always wonder, uh, like, if people don't let me know that just because they enjoy snickering at me or if they, they, they think it's rude. If I ever do that again, please just yell out, put the screen on, come on. All right. That's all the content, right? That is this. All right. So I'm going to save this as a web page, and then I'm going to view it in the web browser. All right. How do I save it as a web page? I go up to File, click Save. It'll ask me the kind of file I want to save it as, and I'm going to save it as an HTML file. And I'm going to put it on the desktop, and I'm going to call it Page One. HTML. All right. And I'm going to save it on the desktop. It's important that you save the type as HTML. If you're using Notepad, you would just change that to say all files and then add the .html at the end of it. So I'm going to hit save. And here is that file right here. Now, if I want to view it in the browser, I'm going to double click on it. And this is Windows 10. It's going to ask me how I want to view it. I'm going to use Google Chrome. And here's my web page. Hmm which doesn't look anything like I had intended. Because I wanted this to be a headline. And by a headline, I mean I want it to be a little bigger than regular text. I want this to be another sort of secondary headline. And then I want this to be a paragraph. And then I want this to be a headline and this a paragraph. This a headline and this a paragraph. So the content is there, but the browser doesn't know what to make of it. It doesn't know what's supposed to be a headline. 
and what's supposed to be a paragraph. And therefore, it just displays everything as just plain old text. All right? Well, this is where you have to tell the browser what each particular piece of content means. You have to tell the browser what each piece of content means. So right now, we're only dealing with a couple different things. We're dealing with headlines, and we're dealing with paragraphs. But later on, we're going to be dealing with a whole bunch of things, right? Images, links, videos, audios, animation, and so on. So we're going to learn a couple tags now, and then later on, we're going to learn tags for all those other things as well. OK, so let's go back into the code, and let's start putting some tags in. All right? Now, I only have one file here, page1.html. I'm simply viewing that file two different ways. I'm viewing the file through the browser, which is how people on the web are going to be seeing it, and I'm sort of viewing the guts of it in Notepad++. All right? So, don't be mistaken and think there's two different files here. There's only one. I'm just looking at it two different ways. It's like the difference between a photograph and an x-ray, right? There's, there's still one you, right? If I take a picture of you and if I take an x-ray of you, just in one view, I'm seeing the outer surface, and in another view, I'm seeing you know, inside, the innards. All right. So I'm going to put some tags in. And what tags are, are, are me telling the browser what a particular piece of content means. Now, this is supposed to be sort of my main headline. It's going to be the big heading at the top of the page. So I use an H1 tag for that. Now, let's take a look at what I mean when I say a tag. All right. All tags sort of look like this. All right. They start out with a less than sign. They have the name of the tag, which says what the tag is. And then they have a greater than sign. So this is a tag. All right? Tags, generally speaking, come in pairs. This looks like this because this is sort of the partner to this tag. This is called an ending tag. The only difference between a starting and an ending tag is the ending tag has a slash before the name of the tag. What this is telling the browser is starting here to here, this is meant to be a top level heading. And when we think of top level headings, what do I mean? Like if you're going to do like a, a, an outline in Word, the top level heading is probably going to be the biggest one, right? Because it's the main topic. All right? So this is going to be, when I view it in the browser, it's going to be the biggest heading. All right? Now, this is also a heading, but this is sort of secondary, right? If I was making an outline, this would be my main heading. This would be a secondary heading. So this I put in an H2 tag. And again, the H2 tag starts here, and it ends here. Now this isn't any kind of heading at all. It's just a plain old paragraph, just regular text. And I can complete the page that way. This is another secondary heading. Don't get confused. These numbers aren't like the first, the second, and third. They're the, sort of the level of the heading. This is a plain old paragraph.
Finally, this is also a secondary he level heading, so I'll make that H2. And then finally, a paragraph. So now I'm going to save it. Well, now I've marked up this. I've done sort of like this. I put tags, these are called tags, or markup in my code that says what each piece of that code means. Now when I view this, I'm going to hit refresh because I made a change to my file. It looks like that. Looks a lot closer to what I had intended. I want it to look like that, and it sort of looks like that. All right? So tags are the basis of defining what the content of your web page is, what it means, how the browser should interpret it. And there's a tag for everything. So the question in HTML is, if you want to know how to do something, what tag do I use? If I want to make a link, what tag do I use? If I want to make an image, what tag do I use? And so on and so forth. Now, we've only gone over a couple very basic tags. And in fact, this is not even a complete web page. This is a shell, of, this is like a, a fragment of a web page. On Wednesday, we'll go and we'll complete this web page. I'll add a few other tags to it to finish it up. And we'll talk more about tags. But this is a basic idea of web page. Everything that you see on any web page is accomplished by whoever coded it, created it, put the content in tags. And the tags tell the browser what the particular piece of content means. And that's how you get all the different content on web pages, by using all the different tags that are available in the language HTML. Any questions about this? All right. So your first lab is to do research on those three topics. Um, you could, if you wanted to, start doing a fragment of the web page, knowing that there's more to it that we're going to finish up on Wednesday. Or you could just start doing the research uh, on it uh, and, and looking up information. Um, that's all about all I had for today. We'll see you up in lab. Um, there was a couple people that came in late.